I want to talk a little bit about thesis statements today. In a research project, a thesis statement is actually going to go through a long process of change. So when you approach a research project, you will probably come to it with some hunch, some sense of a germ of an idea about how you feel about some problem or some, some question. Always remember that this is where research starts. There's a problem that needs to be solved. There's a question or series of interrelated questions that need to be answered. The thesis that you come up with is going to be your solution to that problem or your answer to that question. And the essay that you write is a quasi-expert argument designed to rationalize that answer to the question or that solution to the problem. You want to, you want to explain to people, this is why I think this is the way to solve this problem. Or this is why I think this is how we should answer this particular question. Research allows you to have a knowledge base in order to do that from, from a position of expertise. But as you start a, a research project, that rough thesis that you start out with is going to change, or at least it should. If your mind is open, but not so open that your brain falls out, your thesis will mature. So as you start a research project, you need first the problem that it is you're trying to solve or the, the series of questions that it is you're trying to answer, the series of interrelated questions that you're trying to answer. And generally speaking, you're going to start out with, with what we call a rough thesis. This is your hunch. This is your intuitive answer to the questions or your preliminary solution to the problem. You're going to begin by saying, okay, this is what I know about the issue. And based on what I know right now, which is limited, I'm going to say this is the solution to the problem. Or I'm going to say this, I think, is the answer to these questions. Then you start doing your research. What you're trying to do with the research is get other people's ideas. What have other people thought about this problem? Or how have other people thought about this problem? What other solutions have been answered? offered and why have they been offered? In what ways might these other solutions be effective? In what ways uh, might they be ineffective? And what is it out there that I don't know yet that I need to know in order to effectively answer this question? So as you go through your research, that rough thesis that you start out with will go through a, a period of transformation. Now, sometimes that's just maturing. Your word choice gets more precise. Your, your ideas get more precise. Your, um, your vision becomes clearer. Sometimes, however, you're going to find things that completely change your mind and maybe persuade you that your intuitions were 100% wrong or maybe mostly wrong. Both of these trajectories of a thesis are natural. Go back to something I said earlier in this video. You want an open mind, but not so open that your brain falls out. That is a good rule of thumb for research. As I've said in previous videos, just because somebody has a bunch of letters after their name doesn't mean that they've found the definitive answer to a series of questions, to life's most important questions. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they found the definitive solution to a problem. In fact, it's in the very nature of philosophy or in the very nature of the academic project, the university project, that there is an ongoing conversation about how to solve certain kinds of problems, how to answer certain kinds of questions. As you engage in this research, I don't want you to think that just because you're reading or hearing something from somebody who either is an expert on a topic or who presents themselves as an expert on the topic, just because of that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to agree with everything they say. Challenging other people's ideas, including the ideas of experts, is part of the ongoing conversation of, of the academy. 
It's part of the ongoing conversation of the intellectual project. Most problems that are important at all are what we call wicked problems, which means that the solution could be just as bad as whatever the problem is you're trying to solve, or that the solution will create just as many problems as it solves. But the important thing to keep in mind is that as you sit down to begin a research project, don't be afraid of the inadequacy of your initial thesis. Don't be afraid of your lack of knowledge filling in your, your intellectual gaps is the purpose of research. And don't be afraid of your thesis changing. All of those things are natural parts of the process. The thesis that you end up arguing for at the end of a research project may look very different than the thesis you begin investigating at the beginning of a research project. So one of the problems that novice researchers tend to have is that they tend to see the purpose of research as uh, kind of drudging up quotes or information that will help them defend their thesis that they generated at the beginning of their research project. So as I said earlier, when you start a research project, you almost invariably already have some instinctual answer to the questions you're going to be answering or, answering, or some instinctual solution to the problem that you're approaching. This is your hunch, right? And that's what your rough thesis is. It's your hunch. It's, it's your instinctual preliminary answer to the questions or solution to the problem. But the process of research is not it's not supposed to be done just to confirm your prejudices. And this is one of the places where novice researchers make their mistake. You could almost say that it's a kind of hack research to go out and look for ways to merely substantiate your prejudices. Or, and by prejudice here, I'm meaning your prejudgments, your biases. The purpose of research is not merely to confirm a thesis that you already hold or an idea that you already hold. It's not simply to dredge up facts and figures and quotes from experts to confirm what you already believe. When you're doing your best research, when you're doing honest research, your goal is first and foremost to see whether or not your intuitions are correct, to see whether or not that preliminary idea that you had was correct or not. And you do that by testing it against other people's ideas. That's what makes the difference between an objective opinion or a subjective opinion and a, an objective argument on a particular topic. You, you, you test your thesis, you test your ideas against other people and their best ideas. And so you're trying to find out whether or not your int intuitions are correct or whether or not they were incorrect. And if they're incorrect, why are they incorrect? And in what way are they incorrect? And if they are correct, why are they correct? What makes them correct? And it may be a mixture of these two. So first and foremost, research is to see whether or not your initial thesis statement, your initial intuitive answer to those questions, your, your initial hunch is correct or not. Second, Research's purpose is to acquire knowledge on your topic or on your issue, sufficient knowledge to be able to argue whatever thesis you do develop. And then third, the purpose of research is to know what others have said about this topic so that you can place your ideas into conversation with theirs, so that you can address what they have said in relation to what you're saying, and therefore better substantiate your own position and defend it from people who might have argued a different position. So keep these things in mind as you move forward with a research project.